And thank you very much, Oliver, for joining us this morning. Let's talk a little bit about what we are seeing from a bigger picture perspective. Is that positivity that we're seeing in the U.S. going to carry over and power the rest of the global market? Um, we, we think that you're definitely seeing the, the green shoots of a recovery um, and, and that this could, could change the, the earnings outlook for, uh, for, for, the, for the global economy. Um, this, this slowdown, this sort of mini cycle that we're going through at the moment, uh, the third one that we've seen th since 2008, the first was driven by the Eurozone crisis, the second by, by the oil slump that we had. Um, this one's been driven by, by the trade conflict. It's really been felt in, in the manufacturing sector. Um, but as you say, we're starting to see a, a few green shoots coming through. Um, and that could really change the, uh, the earnings story. Um, it's, it's been, uh, a, a, you know, if you look around the world, you can see that we're, uh, we're seeing better in, um, export numbers coming out of Asia. They're the very first signs, but you're starting to see them. Uh, you're seeing a pickup in some of the new orders data. They, they've stopped uh, falling in the global PMI surveys. Um, and you're also seeing better sentiment coming through uh, in, in some of the Eurozone numbers, um, particularly in terms of the confidence surveys uh, that are out there. Uh, right. But there's no doubt that um, the equity markets are expensive. All right. uh, spe speaking of that, that sentiment that, you, that you're speaking of, there, there was a point over the course of the past few months where it seemed very much to be about accentuating the negative. I mean, we talked about those global PMI numbers, manufacturing slowdowns. Many of those sentiment surveys or soft economic data seem to point towards that kind of downturn. What exactly is it going to take for this market to feel like it's accentuating the positive again? What do you need to see of those green shoots to make that happen? Um, well, we really need to see that, that build into momentum um, on the upside. Uh, I say it's just the green shoots at the moment, um, so we're, we're a little bit cautious still. Uh, there's still a, a lot of, you know, this is the, the tail end of, uh, of the global expansion probably. Um, there's a lot of fragility building up in, in the economy. Um, but we think there's probably at least one more of these mini cycles to go through. Um, but we, we need those, so just those green shoots to really turn up uh, into to actual upwards momentum um, and to really start coming through into to earnings. Um, and we've seen earnings practically stall over the last year. Um, so we, we'd want to see some, some revisions higher um, to, to, to really sort of push equities higher and bring down some of those expensive valuations that we, we see in the equity markets. So one of the things, the, the phenomenon that we've been kind of pointing out to over the course of the past several months is this, 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 this idea of a sector rotation. There's been a move out of some of these more kind of technically growth-oriented sectors like technology into some more value-oriented and dividend-paying ones. We're starting to see a little bit of that unwind right now. Does that unwind continue? Do we kind of see this rotation back now into higher growth parts of the market? Um, we think actually the, the value style probably continues to go. Um, if you look at value regions or, or value stocks around the world, they look really unloved and, and under-owned. Um, and we think that the sort of green shoots that we're seeing could start to push up bond yields. And that tends to be a time when, um, when value stocks really start to, to outperform. Uh, so one of the areas that, that we're really interested in at the moment is, is Europe. Um, if you look at it, you've uh, had very poor sentiment there on the, back of, uh, on the back of the wheat trade data. It's one of the most sensitive regions to global trade if you look at the, the current accounts um, data. Um, but at the same time, you, you, you've, that weak sentiment means that there's a lot of room for improvement. I mean, if, if you go back to August, the, the ZEW survey uh, in Germany suggested that the DAX was actually going to fall for the first time. Um, that's very um, odd that investors are that, that bearish about, um, about equity market outlooks. Um, and at the same time, you've seen 100 billion flow out of, um, out of European equities. Uh, a lot of that's come from, from the U.S. investors. Uh, U.S. mutual fund holdings of, uh, of European equities are down about 30 or 40 percent over the last uh, 18 months or so. So if we start to see um, Europe start to accelerate relative to the U.S., uh, we could really see a, a big flow um, of, of U.S. money in particular coming back into the European market, particularly if things like the tech sector uh, start to fade in terms of leadership um, and if the dollar starts to weaken. Uh, the dollar has been a huge headwind for UN, uh, U.S. investors investing outside of the U.S. Um, in, in recent times. All right. So some green shoots to watch, other sectors to pay attention to as well. Oliver Blackburn, live from London. Thank you very much.